Hello and welcome to tutorial number 3 for the Bell UH-1. Before we start practicing how to fly a helicopter, we need some basic understanding of what's going on and because most of us have already an idea how an aircraft fly, what's the difference between an aircraft and a helicopter. Both need an engine producing thrust and both need some kind of an airfoil that generates lift. An airplane has engines to move the airplane forward and the airflow over the rigidly mounted wings induced by the forward movement creates the lift. The amount of lift depends mainly on the speed of the aircraft. As faster it moves through the air, as much lift will be created. At a specific speed, enough lift will be produced to support the weight of the plane and it takes off literally by himself. Even on the ground, if you increase engine power and therefore thrust, the plane will move forward except you use the wheel brakes to stop him. The pilot controls the speed of the aircraft by changing engine RPM and thereby thrust. Without a forwarding movement, an airplane wants to fly and if you get too slow during flight, it drops like a stone. So in few words, thrust produces speed and speed produces lift and lift makes an airplane fly. In DCS, helicopter pilots do not manipulate engine RPM and power output during flight. Power output and therefore rotor RPM will be adjusted to flight idle before takeoff. A helicopter uses rotor blades instead of wings. They are mounted on a rotating mast powered by the engine. He always operates in a small range of rotor RPM and after startup, every helicopter in DCS keeps his rotor RPM automatically, controlled by a part called the governor. Even when taking off, there are no significant changes in the instrument for rotor and engine RPM. The governor controls the power output to keep the rotor RPMs in the green for its normal operating range. The pilot can adjust the pitch angle of the rotor blades in two ways. With the collective lever, he changes the pitch angle of all blades in the same rate and direction simultaneously. This gives the pilot control over the total amount of lift produced by the rotor system. With the cyclic stick, he can change the pitch angle of the rotor blades independently and in opposite direction to each other. These independent and opposite movement of the rotor blades transforms part of the total lift produced into thrust and enables the pilot to control directional mobility and speed of the helicopter. So in a helicopter, thrust is not directly depending on an engine RPM or engine power output. By controlling the pitch angle, the pilot controls the amount of lift generated by the rotor blades. Because the rotor blades under any flight condition moving through the air with a constant high speed, the helicopter as a whole doesn't have to move. Let's start up the engine and get a closer look to the rotor system. Like most helicopters built in the US, the UE has a counterclockwise rotating main rotor. This main rotor produces an enormous amount of drag, increasing when pitch angle is increasing because of the air opposing the movement of the blades. Drag causes the helicopter fuselage to turn to the opposite clockwise direction. To prevent the helicopter from spinning right, the tail rotor controlled by the pilot counteracts that spinning force 
but needs about 30% of the power produced by the engine to do that. So when increasing pitch angle by pulling the collective for takeoff, drag increases. The pilot has to adjust the tail rotor thrust, which increases also drag at the tail rotor. And the engine needs to produce even more power to support the tail rotor as well. Everything is connected to each other and changes in one input requires changes on the other ones as well. So when it comes to fly a helicopter, one key to success is only to change what's necessary and only as much as needed. And if you do it slowly and gently, changing on one side, you have sufficient time to react and adjust to the others. It is helpful when the pilot needs to control the aircraft's heading in case of a tail roller failure. Increasing power turns the nose to the right and decreasing power to the left. In the next video we talk about the UH-1 specific behavior and how control inputs affect the attitude of the aircraft. Thank you for watching. Please support this channel and subscribe and like the video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always happy landings and see you next time.